We back. Yes, we back. We are back. To numbers 21, we are back. Yeah, 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 we are back. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. We are back. Yeah, it is the Sabbath. Yes, holy, holy night. Yes, the Sabbath is a holy night. Yes, and we are reading the book of Numbers, chapter 21. Victories and plagues along the journey. Woo-wee! Come on. How much can those people take? How much can they take? They still don't understand. Ah, more plagues. At least they got victories. But hey, but we're going to see what says the Lord. Who got the victories? Who got the plagues? Who's suffering? Who's this and who's that? Okay? Ah, did Israel disobey again? Mm. Or did they obey? They got some victories. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So let's read. Let's read. Let's follow along and see what says the Lord. And, and stay for the little explanation we're going to do of, you know, of the verses. Hopefully you get to understand the reading a whole lot better. And what says the Lord? Yes. We are back. 21. Verse 1. When the Canaanite, the king of Arad, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming by the way of Atharim. He fought against Israel and took some of them captive too. Then Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, if you will indeed give these people into our hand, then we will utterly destroy their town. Three. The Lord listened to the voice of Israel and headed over the Canaanite, and they utterly destroyed them and their town. So the place was called Hama. Power! Finally! Okay, too excited. Verse 4. For Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Eden. But the people became impatient on the way. Verse 5. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. 6. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpent among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. 7. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpent from us. So Moses prayed. So Moses prayed for the people. Eight. And the Lord said to Moses, Take a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is beaten shall look at it and live. Nine. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent beat someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Okay? Now, let's continue on. Let's continue on. Verse 10. The Israelites set out and camped in Oboth. They set out from Oboth and camped at Lia Baren, in the wilderness of, in the wilderness bordered Moab toward the sunrise. 12. From there they set out and camped in Wadi Zered. 13. From there they 
set out and camp on the other side of Aaron in the wilderness that extend from the boundaries of the Amorites. For the Anon is the boundary of Moab between Moab and the Amorite. 14. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, Waheb and Sufa and the Wadis, the, An the Anon, 15, and the slope of the Wadi that extend to the seat of to the seat of Ah and lie along the border of Moab, 16. From there they continue to to bear, to bear. That is the well of which the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. 17. Then Israel sung this song. Spring up, O oh well, spring it up. 18. The well that the leaders sunk, that the nobles of the people dug, with the scepter, with the staff. From the wilderness of, from the wilderness to Matana, 19. From Matana to Nahalil, to Nahaliel, from Nahaliel to Bamoth, 20. And from Bamoth to the valley lying in the region of Moab, by the top of Pisgah, that, that overlooked the waterland, 21. Then Israel sent messengers to King Sihor of the Amorite, saying, 22, let me pass through your land. We will not turn aside into field or, vine, or vineyard. We will not drunk the waters of any wells. We will go by the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sihon would not allow Israel to pass through his territory. Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel to the wilderness. He came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. 24. Israel poured him to the sword and took possession of his land from the Anan to the Jabok, Jabok as far as to the Amorite. For the boundaries of the Amorite were strong. 25. Israel took all these towns and Israel settled in all the town of the Am Amorite in Heshbon and in all the valleys. 26. For Heshbon was the city of King Sihon of the Amorite who had fought against the former king of Moab and captured all his land as far as the Anon. 27. Therefore, the Balad singers say, Come to Heshbon, let it be built, let the city of Sihon be established. 28. For fire came out from Heshbon, flame from the city of Sihon. It devoured all of Boab and swallowed up the height of, of the Anon. 29. Woe to you, O Moab! You are undone, O people of Shemosh. Shemosh. He has made his son fugitive and his daughters captive to an 
Amorite king, Sihon, 30. So their, so their posterity perish from Hashbon to Dibon. And we laid waste until fire spread to Bedaba. 31. Though Israel settled in the land of the Amorites. 32. Moses sent to spy out Jazer and they captured its villages and, and dispossessed the Amorites who were there. 33. Then they turned and went up the road to Bashan. And King Og of Bashan came out against them, he and all his people, to battle at Idri. 34. But the Lord said to Moses, do not be afraid of him, for I have given him into your hand with all his people and all his land. You shall do to him as you did to King Sihon of the Amorite, who ruled in Hashbon. 35. So they killed him, his sons, and all his people until there was no survivor left, and they took possession of his land. Okay, okay, okay. Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Faith is mine. Victory today is mine. Yeah, joy is mine. Faith is mine. Faith today is my oh. oh, I'm not having church. I'm rejoicing. Hallelujah. I'm praising. If I start having church, I will never leave. Mm. You should see me when I'm having church at home. Child, it's a non-stop action. But right now, since it is the Sabbath night, you know, still love is only what? 10 46 p.m. Still early, you know. I came from work early, so I'm most night to be like I'm late two to two o'clock, one o'clock. I'm still here, but today hopefully I'll be out of here a little bit sooner. And let's start, 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 let's start. Yeah. Ah. Chapter 21 of Numbers have 35 verse. Let me give you the breakdown. The overall of it, okay? Victories and plagues along the journey. So you know God is at work. You know we barely have to be at work if there's plagues. And you know victory come with listening to God and trusting God. That's how it gets victory. Rebellion come because you didn't listen. You did. You you, you don't trust. Okay. Plagues. Anyway, now first one, two, three. The account of Israel's obedience and military victory against a southern Canaanite uh, enemy at Hama. Destruction. Okay. Form a counterpoint to Israel's earlier disobedience and military defeat in southern Canaan at the end of the spy story. Okay, that's Numbers 14, verse 30, 39 to 45. Okay, pursuing them as far as Hama. Huh? That's in Numbers 14, 45. So, as we said before, at first they had no faith. They had no faith in God. So they got captured. They captured him. Killed a few. Oh, well, you know, you didn't believe in God. You know, some of them actually went, oh, no, it's a long story. Anyway, when you don't believe in God, bad things happen. 
14, 14, 14, 14. Open it up. That's the last paragraph of Numbers 14. Last paragraph. This is a nice short one. When Moses told these words to all the Israelites, the people mourned greatly. They rose early in the morning and went up to the height of the hill country, saying, Here we are. We will go up to the place that the Lord had promised, for we have sinned. But Moses said, Why do you continue to transgress the command of the Lord? That would, that would not succeed. Do not go up, for the Lord is not with you. Do not let yourself be struck down before your enemies. For the Am Amalekite and the Canaanite will confront you there, and you shall fall by, by the sword. You will die. Okay. Because you have turned back from following the Lord, the Lord will not be with you. Why you disobey the Lord? God told you to go somewhere. You choose not to go because you... you, you you have faith that God will take you out. Will will make sure that you 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 possess the land that you receive everything. But hey, your lack of faith, lack of disobedience, your rudeness, okay, will keep you poor. Will keep you at war. Will give you death. Now, okay. Mhm. Mm because you have turned back from following the Lord, the Lord will not be with you. For 44, but they presume to go up to the height of the hill country, even though the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses had not left the camp. They can't go nowhere unless the, the unless God moved. The cloud didn't move. They can't go nowhere. Okay. Now, then 45. Then the Amalek and the Canaanite who live in the hill country came down and defeated them, pursuing them as far as Haman. Now, we see now they got the land. Isn't God good? When you obey, when you have faith, when you have faith, you could do anything. Faith in God power to bring you through. Faith that everything, everything that God say, right? Faith. Have faith in it. You don't have to understand it. You just have to have faith. Okay? Lack of faith will kill you. No faith at all will kill you. It's just a little bit of faith. You still, you still gonna make it. But lack of faith? Oh, come on. It's like a death sentence. Okay. Uh huh. Da, 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 da. Let me. Uh -huh. um. Now, let's do verse 5. Verse 5. The people spoke against Moses and against... For, the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. What? You detest the food that God has given to you to eat? That you didn't labor for? Mm, something must be wrong. Now, okay. The Israelites typically complain about Moses or Aaron and the various mornings, murmuring story. Right in Numbers 11, verse 2. Right? Numbers 14, verse 2. Number 16, verse 2. Verse 3. Numbers 11, then let's get down to number 11. And we're going to compare the, the complaints. Okay, Numbers 11. But the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire abate. Cried out, cried out. Uh, okay, cried out. 14, 2, 14, 2, 14, chapter 2, and all the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron, the whole con congregation said to them, would that we had died, 
in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in the wilderness? Complaints, complaints, complaints. 16.3. Open up to 16.3. Yes, we're going to see how evil is here. 16.3. Disobedient, lack of respect. Okay, they assembled against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, You have gone too far, all the con congregations are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. So, why then do you exalt yourself about the assembly of the Lord? Ooh, disobedient. They want to fight Moses for everything. No respect, no respect for the men of God. Mm, 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 mm. Right? The the murmuring, murmuring, complaining about everything, right? However, this time their rebellion is more serious in that they aim their complaint against God and against Moses. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, on verse 5. Ah, ah. Ah, oh, yes. Verse 5, they're stupid. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Verse 5, the people are cray cray. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Mm. What? You can't speak against God. That's one thing that's it's off limit. You can't speak against God. You want the wrath of God fall on you? You want to die? Well, a lot of them did die. But uh, when they see their life is coming, they say, God, Moses, pray to God to help me. If I was Moses, you know, I said, I don't, I can't, no, no, how bless Espanol. <laughs> I would say, I don't want to say well, what, what you're saying. What, what you said? Pray, pray, pray to God to help you. What? <sighs> Come on, now, stop that. Okay, I didn't, God already not going to take me with me. <laughs> I'm already not going to see the promised land, so I'll be just because of y'all complaining all the time. Now you want me to pray to God to help save y'all to stay alive. Come on, I stop that. Okay, but uh, obviously Moses is not like us. Um, he prayed to God, and God heard, and God gave Moses a solution. Okay? Now, uh, in verse 6, right? Verse 6. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpent among the people, and they bite the people, so that many Israelites died. Right? The Hebrew word for poisonous literally means fiery. It really means fiery. A reference of to the burning pain of a snake bites. Ooh, ah, ooh. Let's get up to eight, verse eight. And the Lord said to Moses, 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 make a poisonous serpent, make a fiery serpent, a poisonous serpent, and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. Look at, make a serpent, right? Verse 9. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a, a serpent bites someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Verse 9, let me explain that. A serpent of bronze is a wordplay in Hebrew. Nahash, N-E-H-A-S-H, -E Nahash, which means serpent. Mm -hmm. And Nehoset, Nehoset, which is bronze, right? Later, in Israel's story, and later in Israel's history, I should have said, King Hezekiah tore down and destroyed what was alleged to be Moses' bronze serpent called Nehushtan? Nehushtan, that's N E H U S H T A N, Nehushtan. Okay? So, so King Nezekiah tore down and destroyed Moses' bronze serpent. The sacred object had become an idolatrous object of worship 
and was though destroyed in second king 18 verse 4 right if you're gonna idolize something god said don't idolize anything but if you're gonna idolize it you gotta be destroyed okay uh it's like the virgin mary and Joseph and all that and all those little statues and, and stuff that they'd be doing. Don't idolize nothing. Destroy everything. Now, uh-huh. Uh, 2 King 18, verse 4. Let me do you second thing. Second King, second King, second King. I think I had it prepared, so I'd have to go and look for it. I guess not. Yeah, I guess not. I thought I prepared it. Yes, it came out. Second uh, king. It's pretty much what I just said, right? Destroyed it. Verse four. He removed the high. He he removed the high places, brought down the pillar, and cut down the sacred pole he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that moses had made for until those days that the people of israel had made offering to it he was called miss hashton okay the people of israel they love to make they love to make idols and worshiping stuff come on now they said to look at it the god there said to worship it so that's the problem with with those people god said look at it if you're sick and then you shall be well and it's also the serpent is if you ever look at the medical books that's what they use for the medical signs and stuff like that in the bible not in the bible in the throughout the world throughout the world Right, if you look through a hospital thing, you're gonna see the serpent sign that they use that symbol as healing. When people see it, they'll know it's food that come from the Bible, just in case that's just a little thing. It's just come from the Bible, okay? In the ancient world, okay, the snake was a complex and powerful symbol of evil, conveying death. As well as fertility, life, and healing. Okay, so that's why people was worshipping it so much. Now let's continue on to the second part. Verse 10 to 33. Okay, verse 10 to 33. He said, the Israelites set out and came in Obad. This, okay. They set out from Oboth and camp in Kepat Liabaren, Liabaren, in the wilderness bordering Moab toward the sunrise. From there, they set out and camp in the Wadis Zered. From there, they set out and camp on the other side of the Anan in the wilderness that extend. The boundaries of the Am Amorites. Okay. For the Anon is the boundaries of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Okay. Now, verse 10 to 13. Is the locate the location mentioned center around the land of Moab and the eastern boundaries of Canaan? Right, they were just giving you a little geography of where the lens was around Canaan. Okay, that's pretty much it. 14. This one biblical reference to the book of the war of the Lord suggests it is an ancient poetic collection describing Israel's early military conquests. Uh another such collection is mentioned again in Joshua 10 verse 13 and 2 Samuel 1 verse 18. Okay? In the book of Joshua. 
Okay. Um, the content of of these works is otherwise un unknown. Unknown. So let's get to fourteen with fourteen for you. Therefore, it is said in the book of the war of the Lord. Okay. Waheb and Sufa and the Wadis, the Anan, okay, and the Wadis, the Anan. Let's get to Joshua 10, verse 13. Joshua 10, verse 13. I just had it put away. I had to look for it. So second Samuel. Second second Samuel one. Let me go to second Samuel one. Joshua ten thirteen. Joshua ten thirteen. Where's thirteen? Okay. Okay. Let me read the what I was reading for you before I stopped. Right? Verse fourteen. Uh, and verse 14 that we are doing this one biblical reference to the book of the war of the Lord suggests it is an ancient poetic collection describing Israel early military conquest another such collection is mentioned in Joshua 10 verse 13 let me read it for you and the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation looked unto the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasha? The sun stopped in mid heaven and did not hurry to set forth about a whole day. Okay. Now, Second Samuel. Two, one. Second Samuel two. Second Samuel one verse eighteen. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jasha. He said that the you know, the book of war, the book of Jasha. He said, okay. Okay, let's continue with 15, verse 15. In the slope of the Wadis that extend in the seat of Ah, A R, and lie along the border of Moab. Verse 15. Um, A R, Ah. Is apparently an important city in Moab. It's a very important city in Moab because it's uh, because it's also not only it show up on fifteen, it's also show up again on twenty eight. And twenty eight, he said, for fire came out from Heshbon, flame from the city of Sihon. It devoured, it devoured, A-R, 
uh, uh, of Moab and swallowed up the height of the Anon. Right? So, obviously, it was a very important city, a, a, a big sized city for that town, you know, and the city of Moab. Verse 16. Verse 16. Let me just see. Thing. From there, they continue to bear. That is the well of which the, the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together. And I will give them water. 16. The place named Bear is the Hebrew word for a well of water. Bear, sorry. The place named Bear is, is the Hebrew word for a well of water. So when you're drinking a beer, you drinking water, <laughs> but not that well of water, okay? Obviously, that well, the one that God gives is so much better, okay? But I don't know where they get beer. The, I, mean, I mean, the devil is so funny, though. The devil take a biblical name and turn it into a, a, a thing to make people get drunk. People say, say beer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink. The the Bible oh the the Bible give you beer as a well of water. The devil give give you beer for you to intoxicate and eventually had had kidney failure and liver failure and sickness will come into you if you consume too much of it. Yeah, it will come. It, it will beer have the tendency to if you drink too much break up marriages, break up homes. Destroy family unity. Where, when God give you beer, you know the well of water, is to bring the family together to come and drink together, so they will not be thirsty, so they could be satisfied. Ah, the devil! The devil don't play. Oh, he's a, he's a manipulator. He's a manipulator, though. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to let you know that that part. Okay. 20. 20. And from Bath Bamoth to the valley of to the valley lying in the region of Moab to the top of Pisgah that overlooked the wasteland. Uh huh. Nineteen and nine, nineteen and twenty. Did I do nineteen? Yeah, from the mother, from Natama to to Nahaliel, from Nahaliel to Bamov, and from Bamov to the valley of to the valley lying in the region of Moab by the top of Pisgah that overlooked the wasteland. Okay, that was nineteen. Now, several of these place, places, place, name the names are otherwise unknown. Several of these place names are otherwise unknown. Well, I guess when Theolo, when they was doing their research about those places, they can't even find, find, find them no more. They are known. Okay. Moab is a nation that lies in the eastern boundaries of Canaan. Pisgah is a high plat plateau that, that look out to the west over a wasteland. The Jordan River Valley and on the land of Canaan. If you look at Deuteronomy 20, 34 verse 1, 2, 4. Deuteronomy is the next is the next book. Deuteronomy 34. Get your pencil out, write down the verses, please. No. Deuteronomy verse 1 to 4. Then Moses went up from the plain of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land. 
Gilead as far as done to all Natalie, the land of Ephron and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as Western Sea, we the Negev in the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as are for the Lord says, said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendant. Okay, I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Okay? So, uh-huh. Okay. Let's continue on to verse 21. 21. Verse 21. I didn't read it for you. Then Israel sent messengers to King Sihar of the Amorites, saying, right? He said messenger. The Amorite occupied a small nation just north of Moab, a small little country. They thought the Amorite did not want them pass through their land. No, 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 no. 22. Let me pass through your land. We will not turn aside into field. We will not turn aside into field or vineyard. We will not drink the waters of any wells. We will not go by the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. Verse 22. On the king's highway, Amen. On the king's highway, let's continue on to. I will give it to you in a minute. Uh huh. Let's get back with me to 20. And we're going to concentrate on 17. We're going to concentrate on verse 17. Okay. The king highway was the main route from the Gulf of Aquaba in the south through the nation of Edom, Moab, and Ammon, ending in, in Syria to the north. The highway run roughly parallel to the western boundaries of Canaan. Okay? So when they talk about the king's highway, it's a long route. Okay? It's a long route. But, don't you think it's crazy how they, they don't want them to pass through their land? Right? Because they fear that they may attack them. They, they may, they may um, drink up all their wells. They may eat all their food. They deny them access. Not knowing that these are the exact land that God had already promised to their ancestors. Look at the names, you know? Look at the names, okay? The Amorites. God already pro promised their land to their ancestors, right? The, the Canaanites. He already gave their land already. Now, uh -huh. let's continue to verse 24. Verse 24. Israel put him to the sword and took possession of his land from the Anon to the Jagbok as far as the Amorites for the boundaries of for the boundaries of boundary of the Amorite was strong. God already promised they was going to have their land, right? Long time ago, he already promised they were going to have their land and possess it. But this time, they possess it because they had faith. They didn't make the same mistake twice. You see that, right? 
they possessed the land because they knew God was going to be with them. But if they had not believed, if they had not said that God's going to be with them, I'm sure they was going to fail and they, was, and they would die. Do you understand? Faith in God ability is strong. Remember when after they said no, they're not going to win, a group went by themselves and then they got slaughtered, they got killed because God didn't move. God was still there. God was still at the camp. God didn't tell Moses to tell them to go. No. They choose to go. And Moses warned them, don't go. Because God is God didn't go. God is still there, standing there. They know when God is moving because they could see the cloud move. They know when God is staying because they could see the cloud stay. God never sent them. But this time, their mouth said, we will win. We will win. So they won. They conquered. Faith, your word have power. Use it wisely. 27 to 30. Verse 27 to 30. Therefore, the ballad singer said, Come to Hashbon. Let it be built. Let the city of Sihon be established. For fire come out from Hashbon, flame from the city of Sihon. It devoured Ar of Moab and swallowed up the height of the Ar Anun. Woe to you, O Moab! You are undone, O people of Shemash. He has made his son fugitive and his daughters captive to an Amorite king, Sihon. So their prosperity perished from Heshbon to Dibon. And we laid waste until fire spread to Mediba. Okay? This ancient poem is a taunt long, is a taunt song to taunt them. Right? It's a taunt song that celebrates an earlier M. White conquest as of a part of Moab territory. Right? Um, Shemosh. Shemosh was on verse 29. Woe to you, O Moab. You are undone, O people of Shemosh. Right? Shemosh is the god of the Moabite. Right? It's the god of the Moabite. Verse 33. Let's do verse 33. Then they turned and went up the road to Bashan. And King Og of Bashan come out against them, he and his people, to battle at, at, at Edwe. So Bashan is another small Amorite nation just north of the Jabok River, okay? Now, you see how the people of that town, they had their own God, right? The Shemosh, right? Um, the Amorites had the, um, the Amorites, Amorites, Moabites, sorry, the Moabites had their own God, and, and the name was Shemosh, that's C H E M O S H, right? On verse 12, 29. You could see, even with their God, they still lost, right? They will, they will, they will still lost because when God, the big G, the head hunter, the Almighty, the all powerful, when he sent his people out, no matter how big or small the other army is, when God sent you out to conquer your enemies, you will always win. You will always win. 
So go in peace. No matter what is ahead of you, no matter what struggle is in front of you, right? Who that come to destroy you. God will always protect you. God will always watch over you, right? All you have to do is ask him. When you ask God, he will move that cloud away from you. He will move every barrier that that is to attack you away from you. But you must, you must, you must, you must obey his will. You must obey his voice. You must always say that God is the one. If God tell me to do it, it will prosper. If God tell me to do that, it will work. But the minute you lack faith and God's ability for your life is the day that you failed in your life. Right? The Bible is like a piece of history. Right? It tells you the history of the people of Israel. It teaches you their history, the lack of obedience, the lack of faith, the, the lack of respect for the word of God. And when in once in a while, they may have they may show some kind of faith. Once in a while. Right? And you see, when they call upon the name of the Lord, even though they've been disobedient to God, God will always stand for them, always be with them, right? God will always be there for them. That's the same thing I want for you today. I want God to be here for you, right? Obey the word of God so he could be here for you. Have faith in God and so he'll be there for you. Never lose sight of how great God is in your life, okay? Now, share this video, subscribe, donate. Only three things. Share it. Subscribe. Donate. Donate your time to prayer, to pray for us. Donate your finance to bless us so we could continue the work that we do. Peace. May the glory of God be upon you and your home. Shalom.